So come into your mountain pose. <clears throat> Feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Knees going toward those second toes. Getting everything, ankles, knees, hips, and shoulder lined up. Activate your core, so bring the ribs toward your spine and up and lengthen through the crown. And bring your shoulders back and down so that your heart stays open and your back is nice and supported. Take a moment just to focus on the breath, drawing energy and awareness inward with the inhalations. And exhale any stress or tension as you breathe out. And just keep that inner yoga focus, noticing how your body responds as we go through our session. And then we'll warm up first for the spine. So bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch out through your fingertips and up through the crown. Spread your toes and reach. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, bring your arms out to the front, keep your shoulders down. And then clasp your hands behind you as you exhale and press the hands to the floor as you inhale and open your heart. <clears throat> and again, stretch out through the whole back of your body. Remember, don't lift your chin too much. You don't want to crunch the back of your neck. And then pivot at your hips as you exhale. Come on over. Lift your sitting bones. Bring your hands toward your head. And just stretch the whole back of your body. Move your chin around, get the neck releasing a little bit more. Lift the sitting bones, stretching the back of your legs. And then bend your knees slightly, lift the ribs, bring the sitting bones down as you wind from the bottom of your spine all the way up and lift your heart. So coming into that upper body, spreading your toes, stretching your spine, getting a nice back bend. And then on an inhalation, come upright and release into mountain pose. As you get back there, just take a moment feeling your spine getting more activated. And we'll do it again. Arms at shoulder level, hands to your heart, stretch to the front, shoulders down. Clasp your hands the opposite way behind you. So remember, shift your fingers in one position over, balance those hands. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, spread your toes, feel the back bend, and then pivot over. Hands up, head down. Maximize or minimize. Remember, personal practice always, doing it as deeply as you need. And after a moment there, breathing, just relaxing, work your way back up as you inhale into the upper body one more time for your back bend. So just feel that chest open and expand. Keep the shoulders back and down. And the head reaching away, hands pressing down toward the floor. And then inhale up, release your arms. And again, just take a moment noticing what's going on as your body gets more activated. Lateral spine next, side to side motion. So we'll stretch the ribs apart. Bring one arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Push the hands away, keep the arm by your ear as you lean to the side, no twist, so don't lean forward. <clears throat> Push the foot you're leaning away from down for extra rib opening, and out through the head. Take a moment there, just relax. <clears throat> Inhale back upright, release that arm. Feel the difference, that's your yoga, noticing what's going on, and bring the other arm out. Palm toward the ceiling, hand over your shoulder. Push the hands, stretching things open. Stay facing forward with your hips and ribs and shoulders. And again, just push out through your hand, down with the foot, getting the rib area really maximizing its opening today. And inhale back up, release your arm. And again, Sideways motion to the spine, rib opening, and then really open the spine for our twist next. So base of the skull, base of the spine, stretch apart. Arms at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands over your shoulders, clasp your elbows, bring the arms by your ears, spread your toes, stretch the spine apart, and exhale toward one side, either side to twist. Take a breath, keep the arms by your ears, keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can as you pivot over. 
So just feel that pivot in your twist a little bit different from our straight forward bend. Keep your arms by your ears. Keep those city bones lifting for your legs. And then in the twist, inhale, working your way back up and come only into your upper body for your back bend because remember, we don't want to overdo the low back when it's twisting. Elbows back, chest high, shoulders down. Take a breath. And after a few breaths, come on up and turn back to the center, switching your arms around, bringing your arms again next to your ears. Stretch that side apart once more so we can, and you know, twist to the other side. A breath in, and exhale over. And again, just deepen as far as you'd like to go. See if your weight is still on both feet as evenly as possible. We tend to shift it to the position that we're leaning toward. So see if you can get the other side evenly down. Take a moment there, keep your arms by your ears. And again, work your way up in the twist into the upper body or the back bend. Take a moment, shoulders down, breathing, opening your heart. Again, just feel that twist back bend only in the upper back as much as you'd like. Inhale, upright, exhale around to the center. Shoulders down, fingertips up. Feel that whole stretch through extended mountain. Crown going toward the ceiling, sitting bones down. Really feel that back of your body. Evenly sink into your feet, into the balls of the feet and heels. And then bring one side up, come up on the opposite toe, lifting that heel. The side you're stretching, the foot stays flat. So get that side opening again going. Exhale that one down, inhale the other one up. Just feel the difference. And then both feet down, both arms up, shoulders down, sitting bones down, crown high. Feel your whole body lengthen. <clears throat> Take a moment there in mountain pose. Arms by your ears. Feel the shoulders. Make sure they're not hunching up toward your ears. Pull them down. Take a moment and breathe. Exhale any tension. Pivot at your hips. Keep your arms by your ears. See if you can get parallel to the floor. Sitting bones back. Toes straight ahead. Elbows, spine, and knees straight. And then drop into ragdoll. Just give yourself a good back of your body stretch. You can pull in with your hands behind your legs for even more stretch if you love it. Or not, your choice. Personal practice. Arms back to the center. And let's do another wind up from the bottom of the spine. Just see if you can feel each of those bones moving back along your spine, coming up into mountain pose. As you get there, just take a moment, feeling the energy flowing through you. Notice your breath and what things are working today, which ones may be a little bit more challenging. Shoulders back and down, crown to the ceiling, and stretch that spine apart. Arms out, shoulder level, palms up, hands right above your shoulders. Again, extended mountain as we begin. So keep your arms by your ears. Keep everything nicely lined up. So remember, sitting bones always go toward the floor. Shoulders always toward the floor. Shoulder blades toward your waist, whichever direction you're in. And fingertips always reaching away as much as possible, getting that lengthening through the side when you're in extended mountain. Keep the crown reaching high and your whole body opening. The more we stretch in mountain pose and extended mountain pose, the more we keep those vertebrae open, which as we get older is really important. So through the neck, through the mid back and through the lower back, we want everything stretching it up. Take a moment there, feeling your body sink evenly into the balls of the feet, base of the toe area, as well as the heels. Make sure that that weight is evenly distributed. And then we're going to go into our chair pose squat. So bend your knees toward, not beyond your toes. 
push the sitting bones way back. That gets you a deeper squat if you want it. And keep your spine straight. So your head keeps reaching toward your fingers and your shoulders still toward your waist. Take a moment there, just deepening as much as you'd like in that squat. Get the weight into your feet evenly. You can maybe shift it a little bit into the heels if that helps you keep your balance better. But you want the whole bottom of your foot supporting you. Take a moment and stretch. Feel the squat. Remember, if you've got knee issues, don't squat so deep. You want to make sure that you're doing what's right for your body. Take a moment and breathe. Keep those shoulder blades going toward your waist, the crown reaching the opposite direction from your sitting bones. And then leading with your fingertips, come on back up, extend and mountain. Take a moment there. Notice what's activated. Palms out, down to shoulder level, and to your side, into mountain pose. Take a moment if you need to circle those shoulders back a little bit, get that circulation going again, feel free to do that. Take a moment and breathe and bring your hands to your heart. <clears throat> Looking at your fingers, inhale and toward the ceiling. So you're coming into another upper body back bend. Chest high, head back. Remember, don't lift your chin too much. You want to keep stretching through your neck. Look at your thumbs, still stretching through your neck. Bring them behind you. Looking at your thumbs. Getting that heart high in your back, bend as deeply as your body likes. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart, pivot at your hips, drop in the rag doll, and just hang for a moment, lifting your sitting bones, stretching your legs. And slide your hands up, <coughs> excuse me, under your knees, and stretch elbows, knees, and spine straight. Take a moment there, lengthening everything. Exhale, bend your knees. We're coming all the way to the floor for our transition already. Yeah. Hips back on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead towards the floor. Child pose, just stretching, letting that back of your body release any tension. Exhale, we feel that lower back getting a little forward bend along with the whole spine. And then inhale, sitting up, bring your legs out to the front and into staff position. Press out through your heels, pull your toes back, getting the backs of your legs stretching a little bit. Sitting bones slightly behind you always, getting that spine nicely aligned over your sitting bones. So, core active, shoulders right above your hips, crown reaching toward the ceiling. I'm going to warm up the hips a little bit more because we've got some things to do with them today. So bring your one foot up to the opposite thigh, as high as it wants to go, above the knee, toward the thigh, wherever it is. And let the knee come down toward the floor. Notice if it's tight today, it may be. If that's the case, you can bring your leg over further to the side. That will release that hip joint a little bit more if you want it to be released. Remember, you can also pad behind you to get a little pelvic tilt, which makes it a little bit easier on your hips and body as well. Add weight from your hands if you want to, but don't press, because if you press, resistance sets in, and things don't relax and release as easily. So you want to make sure you're doing what's right to facilitate your body going into that position, not causing it to resist. Take a moment and breathe. Just relax through the leg, through the hip as much as it wants to. And bringing your foot and knee into your hands or pulling you the leg in with the arms wrapped around, we're going to rotate side to side, getting that fluid in the joint working a little bit more warmly for you, making it a little bit easier. So, of course, if it feels wrong, yeah, just minimize, don't do anything too much for damaging your body. Always check to make sure that that's something that's good for you. And if you love it, of course, you can bring the leg higher or closer, which makes it more intense. But those of you who are having any challenges in your hip, yeah, don't do that. Always do what's right for your body, for your personal practice. 
And then when you feel like that's loosened up even a little bit more, go ahead and bring the foot out and feel the difference on the two sides. Remember, we're always noticing what the body is doing as we go into our yoga practices. So go ahead and know that we need to balance the body always and do the opposite side as well. So go ahead, bring that other foot up and let the knee come down. Press that through the heel and toes. It stays up with the, with the front leg, whether you bring it over to the side or keep it straight ahead. Either way, it works just fine. What you want to do is just relax and notice what your body is doing. Noticing where you are and how you're working is what makes yoga a good practice for you. Carries over into everything we do in life. When we're noticing what we're doing, we can be more effective everything we do. Just let that knee relax coming down, either with the weight of the hand or not, and you never have to do any extra weight or definitely no pressure because the pressure <clears throat> increases resistance. We don't want resistance. We want things to work well with the energy as it's going where it needs to go. So just let it happen. <clears throat> and again, when that's getting a little easier, get your Leg up and move it side to side. Go as deeply into that rotation as you would like. Don't forget, you're keeping your core active, your spine straight, your shoulders relaxed, even while you're doing your rotation. So always, so many things to think about working your body in so many different parts at the same time. When it's easier, if you're loving it, you can make it more intense, or you don't have to. You can just be gentle with yourself because yoga is always best practiced in the right way for you as a personal practice. And then releasing that, bring the leg back out to the center. Feel your hips spinning a little bit more easy and open. And let's do our butterfly. So bring the feet together and the knees out toward the side. Clasp your hands under the toes, pulling those heels in as close toward you as they want to come. And let the knees rotate out toward the sides, feeling that inner thigh stretch. Get those sitting bones slightly behind you, activating the spine up through the crown. Feel the core, ribs toward your spine and up, and the shoulders back and down. Everything working together as you come into that opening through the legs. Take a moment and breathe, just relaxing into it. Your knees may be up, that's okay. That means that your hip area in, in the inner thigh is a little tighter, or that core activated may be a little tighter as well. And then we're going to bring the arms behind you, right under your shoulders. So fingertips or palms to the floor, whatever works for your body. And put just a teeny bit of pressure in that. And as you do, that kind of releases some of that inner thigh, inner core area, and lets your spine maybe stretch open a little bit more, or nice and open at the front. Shoulders and shoulder blades always toward your waist. Just feel that whole body. And oh, wow, while you're doing that, kind of rotate the bottoms of your feet toward the ceiling, which helps to keep those knees and hips and things aligned better so that those knees can keep coming even further, maybe toward the floor. So take a moment, just feeling what your body is doing in response to your movements. Keep adjusting incrementally, always making things even better for you. And when you're ready to release, hands to your knees, lifting your knees, and bringing the legs out to the front. Go ahead, reactivate in your staff position, and bring your shoulders back and down. Bring one arm out to the side, turn the palm up, bend the elbow, fingertips toward the ceiling, and then rotate that arm right in front of your body. Feel that shoulder just stretch a little bit more behind you. Bring the other arm out and bend the elbow across in front of that arm and then just pull it over maybe a little bit further. So the hand is kind of wrapped around the upper arm as you feel that shoulder stretch a little more. And then rotate back to the center, arm out and down, 
This arm comes back, out, and down. And we're going to, of course, activate the other shoulder, just like we did. So sitting bones are behind you, core is active, shoulders above your hips, everything's stretching and relaxed. Arm out, palm towards the ceiling, bend the elbow, bring it to the front. Other arm out, bend the elbow across, and pull it across. Feel the stretch across the back of the upper back and shoulder area. Go only as far as it wants to go. Remember, keep your hips facing the front. Shoulders really not, we're not rotating into a twist. We're just giving the shoulder a stretch on this one. So take a moment to breathe, feeling it. And then rotate the hand back to the center. Release this arm and bring the arm out. Arm out. Um, down and to your side. Feel the shoulders a little bit more open and we'll do our piece resistance for the day. We're going to go into cow space. So bring your knee to the front, heel over next to your opposite hip, outside it, not under it, and just kind of adjust your body. It's a little intense on the hips, remember, so if you get too tight in the hips, you can always go into a more cross-legged position. But for now, try to bring the opposite knee right above the knee you bent first. So get those heels kind of across from each other at hip level if that works or further out if you need it further out. But just kind of try to align. Those knees will probably never make it toward each other unless your hips are really flexible. So don't worry about that. So we've got one knee on top, bring the opposite arm out, turn the palm toward the ceiling, bring that hand right above your shoulder, and bend your elbow so that the hand can come right along your neck. And then take your other hand, pull the elbow in, and slide that hand down further along your neck. And then push your head back because we have a tendency when we do that to tip your head forward and the neck out of alignment. So we want the neck still in alignment with the rest of the spine. Hands sliding straight down your back along the spine as much as you can. And then take that other arm, wrap it down and bend it and see if you can clasp your fingers behind you. If not, just hold your shirt or if you were prepared ahead of time for this pose and you have a strap, you can hold the strap in your upper hand and work the hand the opposite hand along from the bottom up toward the opposite hand. Again, keep pushing your head back into the arm that's up. Keep pulling the elbows in toward your spine. And then the arm that's up and the one that's down, they push away, the elbows push away from each other. Now, as you're doing all that upper body work, getting everything into alignment and activated, Notice that maybe your hips have released a little bit more easily and it doesn't feel as tight through the legs and hips as you're doing it. Remember, core is active, spine is straight, and your elbows are stretching away and pulling in, and your whole body is activated but relaxing so that you can go maybe a little bit further. Take a moment and breathe. Remember, head pushing slightly back. Don't out of alignment. It. And then releasing your hands. Unwrap and feel all those shoulders reactivate in a little bit more easy fashion. And then we can also release those legs into staff position and feel our hips get a little bit more relaxed as well. So take a moment, feeling your whole body Exhale, any tension. And yeah, we have to do that once more to balance the body with the opposite side activated. So we're going to bend the other knee, knee to the front, heel over by your hip. Again, just relax the muscles, let them do what they need to do. If the foot is further forward, that's okay. Do what's right for your knee, for your hips. And then take the second knee above the first, and get it as aligned as possible. You can bring those heels in right by your hips, that's great. If you can't, that's okay. Just keep them as evenly at, distributed as you can, and the knees as much stacked as you can. 
And we're always using the opposite arm from that top leg. So bring your arm out, palm toward the ceiling. Keep the shoulder, shoulder blade down as you bring that arm overhead and right over your shoulder. Fingertips up, keep the core active, the spine straight, lengthening up through the cramp. Bend your elbow into the neck. Other hand comes up and pulls the elbow in. Push that hand down your neck toward your spine. And again, keep the head moving back into that upper arm so that you're not bending your neck and crushing into a forward bend. We want everything still aligned and straight. Take your upper arm and wrap it around. And then on this side again, bending your elbows, see if you can get those hands together or not. Just hold your shirt and work it toward each other. Elbows come toward the spine and then reach away from each other. So the one up goes up, the one down goes down, and both of them go in in the direction of your spine. Head pushing back, core still activated. Relax through the shoulders. As you're focused on that upper body, remember your hips are releasing all by themselves. So just notice if your hips are maybe a little bit easier in that position as well. Take a breath, <clears throat> just exhaling, releasing any tightness. And then releasing your hands and unwinding, feel the circulation all through your shoulders and releasing your legs back into staff position. Take a moment feeling your body even a little bit more activated through the hips, through the legs, through the shoulders, through the arms, everything activated and stretch. Bring your feet to the end of the mat, coming into your staff position with the core activated, and we'll roll all the way to the floor. As you get down, just align everything nicely. Shoulder blades still toward your waist as you bring your arms out to T position. Arms up or down, we'll just do our bent knee twist to activate and balance the body before our relaxation. So sitting bones toward your heels and bring your heels in toward your hips. Heels right next to your sitting bones, press the back gently down, knees straight up, bring the knees up above your hips, feet off the floor. And roll your knees over at hip level, turning your head toward the opposite side. Shoulder blades toward your waist, shoulders relaxing toward the weight, toward the floor and palms either up or down your trees. <coughs> the more your knees go toward the floor, the more that lower back is in the twist. Remember, you can pad if you need to. And the more you turn your head, that's the neck twist. Remember, if you've got neck issues, don't go so far. Always personal practice, what's right for you. Shoulders down, let that middle back stay active in the twist. Take a breath, just relax. And then bringing your heels toward your hips, roll onto your back, straighten things out as much as you need to, because we are going to twist the other way. So knees over your hips, roll them over at hip level toward the other side, head turning toward now that opposite one. And again, shoulders are down, knees coming as far as they want, either padded or not, and head turning only as much as your neck needs and wants. Take a breath. Always activate that spine by releasing the ligaments with the exhalations and allowing the twist to maybe deepen a little bit more for you as you're ready. But never, ever, ever force a twist. Just let it happen. Take a breath. Just relaxing. Deepening as much as you like. And then heels toward your hips, rolling onto your back. Feet to the floor, sliding the legs out, hands next to your hips, palms up into corpse position for our relaxation. Shoulder, shoulder blades down toward the floor and toward your waist. Toes toward each other, relaxing your lower body completely, letting everything release as you let the legs and feet and hips relax. Deep breath in. Exhale, just let that whole torso grow heavy. 
your whole body broke out. You just sink it into that earth support and let your body go completely. Soften your belly, soften your muscles, soften your awareness of everything, letting your body just deepen into its earth embrace. And allow thoughts of your body to release from your attention. And as those thoughts drift away, just let any thoughts come into you drift away as well. It's never needed to remember the past or anticipate the future. Just let those thoughts go. It's the job of your mind to produce those thoughts, but it's your choice whether you pay attention. So let the thoughts drift away. Let your body sink. And just allow your whole self to release into the awareness of the peace within, deepening into peace for your relaxation. And of course, keep relaxing as long as you have opportunity to do it. if it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, just begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. <clears throat> and as you begin breathing more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however feels good for you today. Breathing and stretching it whenever and however you need to. And of course, when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, heels toward your hips, and knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, bring your head and feet to the floor, roll to the side, and sit back up, getting ready or whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.